Hey y'all, coming to you from the International Headquarters of Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2022 SEMA show and I came across this one-off handmade Marcel Roadster I think y'all are gonna like. Let me get the camera turned around, we'll take a quick look at it. Luke, thanks so much for giving me some time this morning, brother. You're welcome, fun to be here. Dude, that thing that you had at SEMA. That's, uh, I mean, it's something I've been dreaming about for 30 years and uh, finally had an opportunity to start on a project for myself. Tell me, where did the design come from? My favorite cars were the, the Maseratis and Ferraris and Scarab and Aston Martin Jag from the late 50s, you know, 57, 8, 9. And I just came up with all different ideas of how to put all that together. And uh, I didn't want to copy anything. I wanted it to make it my own. But from every angle, if you're a... Aston Martin fan, you're going to see the Aston Martin in it. If you're a Ferrari fan, you're going to see the Ferrari in it, you know. So I was hoping to, to get away with, with that idea, and, it, man, it just worked out better than any of my expectations. Yeah, and I do see all those influences. Well, it does not have the appearance of a bunch of stuff stuck together. To me, it all <laughs> flows together. It all works. It looks like a... Uh, a package, uh, a very cool sports car, and I can see the the generation influences, you know, because necessarily you wouldn't see a car like that built today. 50s, 60s, you could have seen something like that. Right, right, right. And you build it all out of aluminum? The whole car is aluminum, yes. It's 100% aluminum. I wanted to show off my metal work. That was, that was the plan on this car. I was hoping to, to finish it as nice as you can finish aluminum metal work. And I had no, no intention of ever painting it because, again, I wanted to show off what can be done. I mean, again, I, I had some help from Squeak White on this, and I, I couldn't be happier with how it came out. I mean, I took it down to like a 2,000 grit wet. I didn't want it polished. I don't personally don't care for that polished look. I just want it to look like a clean piece of aluminum. And obviously, while I'm working on it, you know, you're beating it up and sanding on it and filing on it and welding on it. I tried to get all the scratches out of it just to make it look like a raw piece of clean aluminum. That's important to mention because, again, if you're not familiar with what you're looking at, this was all flat aluminum at one point. All this yeah, has this, been done this... by hand. I guess you use bucks or something. How do you form it? Yeah, first I, I make a complete wire buck out of, uh, you know, for I can't draw, so that's how I do my design work, just out of a, a wrought iron, you know, a, a square tubing, flat bar. And a combination of that, and I, I miss my buck. And then um, from that, you know, the obviously I can't shape that in one piece of metal, so it's several pieces. And after making that buck, you can kind of keep left and right the same. And what I really like is uh, the welds turn a little bit different color, and that shows up in this raw state that it's in. And I think that people just thought that was really cool, that you could see the handwork in it. You could see where it was put together. Dad used to always say, you know, when we're building these cars, it's like a loaf of bread. You stick it in the oven, and you're never sure how it's going to come out. This thing just came out beyond my expectations. I named this car the Marcel Roadster after my dad. He passed four years ago, and I wish he could have been around to see this. Hopefully his name goes down in history and as far as metal shapers go. And uh, I'd like to dedicate this car to my dad. Uh, that's awesome, dude. I think he's probably one of the ones that, you know, has been around and did the most. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because there again, we were just talking that uh, a lot of cars that people wouldn't know, they're under other builders' names or whatever. Have, well, you uh, look at the you know, the Boydster, when that hit the, you know, hit the scenes, that was, that almost changed the industry, you know, and that was a Chip Foose design we built and Boyd was the contractor, you know, but at the end of the day, it was all Boyd. You know, that was, if it wasn't for Chip designing it and us building it, Boyd doesn't have those kind of ideas, if you know what I mean. He just was the guy that put all the people together. You know, he had his place. Without him, these cars wouldn't get built. You know, I, I don't know how many people know or don't know that we did the metal work on, on so many of these cars that, you know, guys like Boyd or Rick take all the credit for. You were telling me how many, tell me the, the amount of awards that your company has from just building the bodies. Well, and again, it's not because we built the bodies that these awards, you know, it's the way these cars get finished to win these awards. So, you know, shout out to these builders. But we've got, you know, four Riddler winners and 11 AMBR winners. You like them roadsters? Yes, I do. The, the cost goes up so much when you start doing coupes, you know, and again, we don't take cars and splice and dice and chop them up to, to make an end result. We start with nothing. 
we start with a chassis and you know flat metal off the rack to build these things so there's none of us are engineers you know my dad wasn't my brother myself you know and we got to invent all that stuff as we're going so it, you know doors windows all that has to fit on a coupe and uh we've done a few the black pearl that was a hatfield car that was a coupe you know and and uh then a few others but just the amount of work that goes into it is ridiculous compared to doing something with a lift off top and no windows right on and when we mentioned hatfield we're not talking about hatfield and mccoy's we're talking about james hatfield the yes metallica yes. Singer. Metallica, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, you all are modern day coach builders. Yeah, pretty much. You walk in our shop, and it's just like walking in a shop in 1930. The same tools, the same way of doing things. Some of these Ferrari books, you know, as I'm looking through them, they're, you know, Scaglietti and Pina Frina and stuff. Looks like our shop. Same tools, same wire bucks, same, same way of doing things, you know. People will bring me a chassis. They'll bring me a three quarter front and rear view of what they want, and then. I'll build that car. I'll give it to them ready for a good painter. I'll metal finish it to where a painter can get it done. The The car that you saw at SEMA, I went a little overboard on that. You know, nothing needs to be quite that metal finished for paint. But man, it's cool when it is. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a challenge. Uh, it would, uh, I was afraid if I just painted it, nobody would realize it's all aluminum. I, I was afraid if, if I paint it, people are just going to think it's fiberglass. You know, the inside, the underneath of the car is just as clean as the as the outside of the car. It's just as straight. It, it didn't get that sanded finish to that level, but the you know, I mean, it's it's metal finished inside and out, basically. What powers it? It's got a uh, an LS3. We put the um, the Borla induction eight stack on it just to give it that period correct look. It's got the tilted in eight stack and i wanted that because i didn't want a really wide hood scoop i wanted a narrow you know more italian looking hood scoop on it we've got a uh, a tremec six speed transmission and a winter's quick change rear end in it the wheels real knockoffs uh they are real knockoffs the chassis something you made or is that did you get that no i i, I had that made that was a, a chassis i had done i think i could build a chassis but not unless i had something to copy so i i didn't so I, I just had a chassis guy build that. And interior. Yeah, that was, you know, I ended up making the seats, and the seats came out so nice, I didn't want to just cover them in leather. And then Chip came up with the idea to um, make some inserts, and then he drew the whole interior design. And then Al's upholstery did all the upholstery work on it. He did all the leather. And, but, uh, again, couldn't be happier. Chip, you know, he c came up with the idea of making it look period correct, and I couldn't be happier with it. No, brother, I, like I said, very, very unique build, very cool, and uh, what a pleasure to be able to get to talk to you this morning. Before we run, <laughs> anything else I need to know about the car, anybody you need to give a shout-out to? Yeah, I really want to thank, you know, Squeak White for all of his help, and Doug Peterson, of course, Boost Design, Brad Brody, uh, the guys at MagnaFlow, they helped me a ton, Mike Curtis helped, and then uh, Al's Upholstery did a great job. And a big shout out to Borla. They really gave me a, a lot of help on this car. So Chip Boos, a big shout out because uh, without him, I don't think I could have got this car finished. We've been working together for, gosh, a little over 30 years. Again, without him, I don't know that I could have got this car the way it turned out. So thank you very much, Chip. Couldn't do it by myself. You know, I, I really need these guys. It, we made a great team. And uh, again, couldn't be happier with how it all came out. Any, any for people that want to follow what you got going on, what's the best way to do that? I've got an Instagram page. It's Marcel's Custom Metal, and that's probably the easiest way to. I, I try and post pictures, maybe you know, once, sometimes twice a week of something I got going on. Luke, again, thanks so much, brother, for giving me some time this morning. No, thank you. This is awesome. So there you go from the 2022 SEMA show, a very cool one-off custom built roadster, the Marcel Roadster. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Hey y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.